In this tutorial, we're going to look at the new look and feel, as well as some of the new features of our Write Mobile Consultant tool. Uh, what we're looking at here is the sort of older version, uh, the classic version, if you will, of Write Mobile Consultant that we've had going for a few years now. Um, the basic layout would be your uh, page tabs across the very top of the page, and some menu commands, as well as some other options at the bottom of the page. Uh, that's been the basic function. Each page has a there's customer where you put customer and contractor contact information on this page. The footprint page where you actually input uh, a building uh, for the purposes of running a load and some options that go along with that. The details page uh, where I can input the details or uh, building materials and other information for furthering that load calculation as well as some options there. Uh, the loads page which will break down the load calculation that I do. Utility cost, where I can pick equipment for comparisons. Uh, accessories page for building out the prices of those systems. Uh, payback period for comparing those systems and comparing prices as well as further building out the price. Um, and a proposal page where I can actually uh, prepare and print uh, a proposal. The major changes that you'll see are going to focus on these first four pages here. Customer, footprint, design, and loads. Uh, the utility cost through, through proposal has been largely unchanged, uh, except that we've uh, relocated uh, the menu bar at the bottom uh, where we would have uh, your little menu commands here for creating new files, saving work, and so on, and the options page for a lot of these uh, tools where there's more information to be had, we've used this info button. Well, when we come over here to our new Write Mobile Consultant layout, we can see that things look differently. But you can see utility cost, accessories, payback, and proposal still stays the same. What's been reorganized is the loads page and this menu bar here. Now a lot of the information that's on this lower menu bar uh, was located at the bottom of the browser. This button right here, this is the menu command. This is what we used to use uh, the WriteSoft logo for. Uh, this icon uh, is something that you've probably seen in other programs. It's a little more universal and so we've switched the menu command to this button. Same features, same functionality, but you hit the menu button to create new files, save files, open files, and so on, rather than the WriteSoft logo at the bottom of the page. So just like the old version, we have another bar for more options, but instead of it being at the bottom of the page, we've just moved it to the top. Now we've also relocated some information that used to get its own page to this menu bar. Rather than have, uh, say, customer information be part of one of the main tabs, we've moved it here to this lower menu bar. Now the customer page is relevant to pretty much everything you're doing. You go to loads or utility costs or accessories or any of these other pages, the customer button remains one of the options where I can click and jump to the customer page. What you'll still find on the customer page is the uh, comfort information, the comfort survey. And what you'll find on here that you'll no longer find on the footprint page uh, is this select reports option. We've put that a little more forward to the front um, so that you can access what reports you want to print from any of these options here, whether it be utility, accessories, payback, or proposal. Just come to the customer page and you can change what reports you want to view. So that's something that's been relocated. Um, it used to be at the bottom of the footprint page, way back here on the info. There's quite a few steps to get there. Um, now it's on the customer page, right there up front big select reports button here. Now a lot of what used to be customer, footprint, details, and loads has just been moved onto this main tab called loads. Now as you change tabs, these buttons down here change, right? We get some other uh, options. Uh, customer we've already talked about, it's pretty simple. Details, the details page uh, is something that just pops in on the footprint page itself. It no longer gets its own dedicated tab, which is nice because you can see what you're doing here still. You're, you'll still see your drawing behind uh, the screen. You can just pop this details button open um, and you can access all of that detail information. Um, another really nice thing about this is uh, back in the old user interface, the details page was split onto two pages. Right? Once you got done with the building materials, then you had to hit the info button to go to more information. Well, now it's all condensed onto one page. So when you click the details button, there's all that info, front and back you might say. Both this and this from the details page are just launched into this floating window, which makes it a lot more accessible, a lot easier to work with, and a lot harder to overlook something, which is really nice. Um, we've added this outputs page here. Now this is something you can toggle on and off by closing and hitting our little classic info button, but Frankly, it's something that I would probably maintain the entire time I do a design. I really don't see a whole lot of need to 
uh, close this button here or close this screen here um, and it's going to give us the information that we used to keep at the top of the page with some heating loads, cooling loads, tonnages and so forth but well, we now have your heating loads and cooling loads but also some square footage information and some other tools that we might use that we're going to get into with uh, our new features um, so that's also quite nice now we also have the uh, loads page, load meter uh, we call it. Uh, if you click on the load meter, uh, that will bring up your load uh, information. Uh, that's just a simple reorganization. We used to keep it uh, here on its own tab. Since it's really just part of the loads, uh, we've moved it to the sub menu, hit load meter, and then you have an option uh, to view this and uh, uh, close it. Uh, now, the big thing that we've added to this load page, as you've no doubt noticed, the big difference when I flip between these areas, the old footprint and the new, is the fact that I'm looking at an image of Google Maps here and I have an address bar. So what's this? Well, if I go to the address bar and I type in an address powered by Google using Google Maps, I'm going to be able to find that address and it's going to show that location on a map. I could use this as a point of reference as we do our best job to scale it. Um, now, satellite images can be a little difficult to scale exactly correctly, so you are going to want to keep uh, an eye on your measurements. Uh, but it's a very good way to see the footprint of the envelope while you work. It's also a great way to be able to check the orientation of the building while you work. Okay, so that's excellent right there. Um, but some of the other really cool new features is when it does locate this address, completely separate from our Google Map capability, rather than actually tracing out or drawing the building itself, over here we have the ability to uh, identify your building from a real estate database and identify the square footage of that building. Now, Using these tools down below, I can choose how many stories this building should be and auto draw that building from the real estate database. We will give you a sample envelope of that two-story building based on that square footage. Now I can still manipulate this drawing in any way I could draw in the old RMC, but this gets me a good start based on a common geometry of uh, an average American footprint based on that square footage. You might consider this to be an initial load, if you will, uh, as I'm looking over these numbers. I can still manage my footprint by changing my window. See, here's the icon right here in my uh, outputs box that would change from footprint mode to window mode. We move that from the bottom of the screen to the right hand side. If the Google image, the Google Maps image uh, is um, out of scale or out of whack or, or just is no longer useful to you, you can hide the Google Maps image to focus on uh, the actual envelope that you're drawing. Um, if you want to choose what floor you're actually working on, right, we have the uh, current, uh, current floor option that we can make adjustments to. Um, now here's a common mistake. If you forget to set the number of floors of the building before you auto draw the footprint, uh, program may actually draw, you know, if I had a one-story select and this is a two-story building, the program draws me a giant one-story footprint to meet my, meet my square footage. This is actually a two-story building, so it should be half this size, just one on top of the other. Simply change the number of floors to auto trace and then redraw it with the auto draw from real estate database and it will redraw this footprint. So I can manipulate this as much as I, or as little as I want. Now we still have the options for clearing the current floor or all the floors on the screen. Uh, we used to put those on the file menu. Uh, now we keep them here. So if I want to go to window mode, I switch to window mode, adjust my windows as needed, just like before.